Hey everyone, it's Veiled Shot back out of the video, and today we're going to be going through every single epic and giving my brief thoughts on each single one. I am revamping the tier list currently for the Void Tower rotation and all the recent patch, uh, the buffs and nerfs that have happened, and the new characters that have introduced. But today we're going to be going through and just giving the brief thoughts on all the epics. So if you do enjoy the content, be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and let's jump into our first one william here so william is going to be your classic support pretty much fitting into every single team he's going to boost your whole team and he's going to provide uh the defense down one of the few aoe defense downs in the game and he can actually fit even better now with the arena changes on offense because now you can run stun spell and a defense down in william but he's just going to fit every single place in speed team late game with counter attack and of course just buffing your normal team then we have thomas and thomas is interesting he kind of has one spot really for me and that is zitlin speed comp in tulpa um he has a defense down two here which is really really nice one of the few defense down twos in the game just a little bit of counter attacking when he's getting hit he can provide a little bit of cc and overall a very very niche character then we have Edicris, and he is interesting but i don't really see a use for him in the game right now but he definitely has a ton of innate survivability with his uh, extra turn here and healing himself and cleansing. And then, of course, getting himself invincible and swapping that attack to defense. Really, really makes him a pain to kill in Arena, actually, if you have seen him in there. But other than that, I haven't really found a particular use for him. Then we have Jacob, and this one is an interesting one. I've gotten a little bit higher on Jacob since I made my in-depth guide on him. Just because um, there have been a couple of changes in the game that have kind of leaned me towards Jacob. But overall, he's a very solid character and guild boss can work really well with people who are making him attack often. Um, and if you get any longer fights, you know, sometimes in Void Tower, specifically this rotation, when you're running the tank comps, you can absolutely run Jacob in here, stack up his passive, and then go in for a kill with this, like six, seven turns that you're going to get in a row. So now we're going to move on to the Christmas faction. And first up, we have Mognar here. And I actually dislike what they ended up doing for him uh, in the recent patch notes. They made him much more consistent, but I like consistency in my sets, but in characters, I think I like the idea of having these unique characters like Mognar, for example, um, where he's going to just gonna do random things if you get specific circumstances met. And so I just don't really see a use for him in general. Now he's a, just pretty much a RNG base with his trait, but then you can't fulfill some certain requirements like stunning people and then getting a ton of damage out of him. And of course, you're not going to get that massive shield as a, you know, ability. So... Eh, I'm not super high on Mongar, uh, especially after the most recent patch. Then we have Bruzak, and I think Bruzak is actually a very, very niche type character. I have pretty high on him in Void Tower because of the AoE taunt here, which is really, really nice. And then, of course, the AoE with Defense Up 2. Defense Up 2 is not to be underestimated. It is very, very strong. But also in Arena, he... he comes in very very handy with the aoe taunt and then also this passive a lot of people forget about this passive where you can actually just completely transfer all the damage to him very very interesting arena character in bruzak urzag urzag is i think only useful for one specific combo and it's actually a really, really fun combo and that is urzag plus yolanda you can get urzag down if you can get urzag down to a little bit of hp and then have yolanda put up a massive shield on him and then get that crit rate resistance and he's just going to be smacking really really hard uh but you really really need him to be low hp and if he's low hp he's going to die unless you have someone like yolanda who can actually keep him alive without increasing his hp then we have orak and orak is just a one of the best if not the best single target damage dealer in the game he is absolutely amazing however in order for him to reach that standard you need to be hitting people with higher higher max hp and this is one of the reasons why i thought Garel wasn't going to be as good as he you know kind of was perceived and that is because orak is just amazing with his ultimate dealing damage true damage based on the target's max hp and then of course just having overall great damage and honestly a little bit of sustain with this lifesteal and then even in the off chance of getting a little bit more aoe and uh defense down he's just an amazing character pretty pretty worth building up and then we have Okubi, and he is a very, very awkward one. I very, very much dislike him. Now, every single time I mention this guy, everyone's like, oh, but some person used him in this comp, or some person used him in this comp. And every single time I've seen someone say something like that, every single time my response is, oh, well, you could just use Veluke in that comp. Usually they're using Gengelo Santis plus Veluke, um, and instead of Veluke, you could use a Kubi. And so I just don't think he's worth building because I'd rather just build out a Veluke. Um, I'm just not a huge fan of him, but very, very interesting kit and very, very fun. 
Then we have Silen, and she's one of the newest ones. Very, very fun one as well. But again, just not very good in regards to replacing one of your already established team members. His, her passive is really, really nice, uh, getting the uh, additional chance of randomly nullifying damage, which is massive in Arena specifically. The counterattack every single time someone attacks him with defense up is massive as well. AoE defense up on your team is really, really nice. And then this single target stun. If this was AoE stun, this would be very, very interesting. I think she would have a immediately a place in Void Tower and things like that, which I think I think if they give an AoE stun here, I don't think it's too broken. Um, maybe someone in the comments will be like, no, that's too broken, but I actually don't think it will be. Um, but uh, I think it'll make her a staple, and that's, you know, fine with me. But very, very interesting with the counterattack. I just don't think she's good enough to fit in any comp yet. So next up, we have the Lassier faction, and first is Hugh. So Hugh is a speed-based damage dealer. Now, we don't have any information regarding speed-based multipliers, um, which is a little unfortunate, but I will say from testing him myself and from a lot of other gameplay I've seen, I'm not a huge fan of Hugh. He just doesn't do enough damage to warrant the kind of this niche that he's going to be in, which is he's going to be counterattacking if people are lower speed than him. And he has this interesting kind of like reverse wind strikes where you're speed downing uh, like uh, Hydrasia, but he just doesn't do enough damage to warrant building him out. Then we have Vance here, and I actually really like Vance, but the only concerned with him is he just doesn't have too many uses you don't really want single target damage dealers in a lot of areas and he's wood which means that he's competing with antenua for that spot but that being said he does have a couple of uses that i've seen him in and that is void tower and arena because his ultimate is one of the hardest hitting single target damage dealing skills in the game if you get a couple buffs on someone he's going to get an extra percentage there however on top of that he's going to get an additional 30 percent damage from positive if they have a, a positive effect and he's going to be ignoring positive effects which is really really massive for someone like um you know nick especially since the water prism spell has changed so if you have a nick on the enemy team he can come in and just smack them <laughs> and it completely ignore those positive effects which is really really cool then we have kyle here and kyle unfortunately is really what i see as a early game win strikes counter or until you don't have win strikes yourself because he does have the higher base speed, but once you get those glyphs maxed out, he actually has a lower base or a lower speed than Windstrex, which is a little unfortunate. He's not very useful for PvE content. You can't copy elite units, you know, so you need epics or legendaries. So there's some legendaries and epics that you could copy in Void Tower. However, you don't get their stats. Um, if he copied the stats as well, I think Kyle could be a very, very interesting character. Um, obviously, it might be a little dangerous for Void Tower, but definitely, definitely uh, kind of niche in the early game and then completely drops off, from, in my opinion. Then we have Scarlet, and Scarlet's interesting because she has two things going for her. One, she has the Gengello type passive, but for bleeds. However, bleeds aren't very useful <laughs> in general. Now... But on top of that, we have the wolf passive with her, which is interesting because she can kind of combo with joint attacks. So things like Irondil, things like Marion, things like Jacob really, really work well with Scarlet. But unfortunately, all those different ideas are not practical in, in reality. They don't really fit into any area of the game except for maybe Guild Boss. And Guild Boss is just not that uh, useful to run. Then we have Marion, and Marion is actually a very, very excellent character. I think a lot of people um, kind of look down on Marion, but she's basically just can be a better poisoner. Now, unfortunately, you kind of do need this second ascension for her to really shine. But the real problem with her is that she has a C-based defense and a low base health. So when you are comparing her to the poisoners, she's actually quite hard to keep alive. But, you know, she's going to be doing true damage, which is basically what poisons are. And then also is going to be doing more true damage and then had possibility of joint attacking for even more damage um but you need that speed high so she does have like a really high gear requirement and on top of that the second ascension so that's where she comes into trouble so next up we have the soul plunders epics and the first one is santis and santis is an absolute monster she is one of the best poisoners in the game um and definitely the best singular poisoner in the game so like if you're using her alone on a team i think she actually outweighs gangelo off the oftentimes because she can apply so much more poisons than he can um and then we have a one of the best traits in the game and then on top of that we have just the ability to not even level up the abilities like we don't even need the abilities 90 percent of the time and then on top of that she actually has some really high base stats really high base hp and a base defense for being an epic and a really really excellent speed stat so she's really really easy to build out and she can be used in every single dungeon in the game and she's crucial for the ice wolf comp the most important comp in the game in my opinion besides like your initial queen 12 comp 
which you can use her in there as well. So she's just an absolute monster. Then we have Andre, and unfortunately, Andre kind of hits the, the sideline because single target damage is not often used, and he's water, so water single, single target damage is even less used. Um, you know, you can use single target damage for Tulpa, but that's wood. But he also is subpar compared to Ciara, and Ciara technically is a free character, although a lot of you don't haven't finished Void Tower hard. But if you do get a Ciara, you're pretty much never going to see this guy ever again. You can use him in Ash, you can use him in Girl Boss, but again, not really in regards to the practicality aspect. So next group up is going to be the Sylvan Woodlands faction, and we have quite a few here, so let's go through them all. We have Helmar first, and Helmar is basically the Gajar of Bleeds here. He's going to be detonating all the bleed effects, but unfortunately, bleeds are pretty weak. So you're really relying on stacking a bunch of them, or at least just the base damage. And he does not have high multipliers at all. He's pretty uh, terrible character, and I've not seen him use pretty much anywhere, unfortunately. Next up, we have Kane, and Kane has actually been getting buff after buff, and he's starting to look more and more appealing every single time they buff him. So. He's got a guaranteed strip on basic, which is very, very rare. There's not a lot of stripping effects in the game. And so finding it on basic is really, really nice. He also has a really high multiplier, assuming you can get to the six strikes. Now, obviously this is RNG based, but 300% damage is really, really high on a basic. It is equivalent to some ultimate multipliers out there. And then we have one of the few characters that's defense down too. He just has some really, really unique skills. Um, but unfortunately he's just not quite there uh, in order for us to be using him in uh, in the places that we would suggest maybe like queen um but he is useful in some areas like the light dungeon but on to Irindel here we have another joint attack character as we've talked about with uh jacob and marion he relies on people critting so he can jo come and join in he's got a couple buffs on his basic and his ultimate so he does quite a bit more damage than he used to however it's kind of hard to find a, a place where the joint attack is actually viable in reality it's a fun comp it's definitely good for some guild boss um affinities but you know you're not going to be using it in your pulpa runs or your your queen or your ash and that's when it really matters you know you're going to be really focusing on dungeons and void tower anything that doesn't fit into those types of comps is really not worth building until you've done all that Next up is Antinua, and Antinua is the single highest single target damage dealer in the game. My vote for the best, and she's just absolutely amazing. All of her skills here are single target. She gets a buff uh, to reduce the damage that she takes, and also deals bonus damage if she has this Unicorn's Blessing trait active. It makes her so her ultimate's giving her bonus turns. Her first skill is going to be hitting twice. So between these two right here, you can get 400% damage, which is absolutely nuts. And then assuming you're running curse set on her um, or something else, if you're running curse set on her, you can curse proc off the ultimate, which is 300% total. And then a curse proc off the basic, which is another 300%. So 600% on a single target. Absolutely nuts. No one can compare with that. Not to mention you're getting extra 30% bonus damage if uh, you calculate that as well. So she's absolutely massive, a really, really crazy good character, and I am building her currently. Next up is Lunar Melisa, and this one I think a lot of people slept on for quite a while. I have been saying since the beginning, I think she'd be a great Void Tower and Arena character. I just had not been building her because I was focusing on dungeon teams, but she's seen a huge resurgence, um, or rather, <laughs> surgence, <laughs> um, for the first time in Void Tower and Arena, and she's absolutely amazing. Full AoE taunt is why you use her. You pretty much use this taunt and then she dies off because she's, you know, getting, taking all the hits. But if you happen to like, keep her alive, she has a, a stun on second skill. And if you happen to run a cool, some cool combos, like, for example, your characters die, you run a Methasia, revive them, you can actually reduce her ultimate cooldown, which is pretty fun. Next up is regular Melisa, and this one, again, is another one I think a lot of people were sleeping on. I've been singing her praises. You've seen me build her on uh, my alt account here. She is absolutely nuts in regards to her first skill damage. Her trait's giving her 45% attack, crit damage, and speed, which means you don't have to build her any speed, and she'll pretty much go first guaranteed. She can even, even compete with some of the Windstrexes out there. She has a lot of speed from her glyphs. So if you get her, you know, maybe 220 speed, you can compete with some of the Windstrexes at 310 speed, which is absolutely insane. Um, on top of that, you can just instantly one-shot those Windstrexes as well. So she's an absolute ma uh, monster character. Very, very good for Arena and Void Tower. Next up is going to be Virgil, and Virgil is pretty solid. He kind of lacks a, a lot of places. You really only use him for this ultimate ability, which silences all of the enemies. However, I think he could be used in some select scenarios uh, with this 
trait here. He can apply this Arcane Sanction, and Arcane Sanction actually deals 20% of the enemy's max HP, and some of these abilities can have lots of chances to apply this Arcane Sanction, which is really, really nice. It actually does insane amounts of damage to the bosses. Granted, he has water affinity, so really the only boss you'd use him against is maybe Ash. And so, meh, but super, super interesting character and really, really useful for that unique silence ability. Next up is Windstrax, and she is definitely a top five epic in the game. I think between her and Nathalia is the best epic combination to go for when you're starting out the game. If you happen to get those two, you should be very, very excited. Why is she good? There's really, uh, I mean, there's two reasons, but really one reason in particular, and that is because she has the one of the only, if not the only speed up two in the entire game. Uh, so 50 speed plus the attack up buff, and it is the perfect skill for your nuker so you can run lower speed and then just get them buffed up with their attack. And of course you can pull, pull all that stats into attack and crit damage, crit ray. And then not to sleep on the other skills either, like this this second skill is going to refresh the ultimate cooldowns of some abilities, which is really, really nice. She can also apply some speed down. She's useful everywhere. She's absolutely amazing. Then we have Celestial Kane, and this character is very, very interesting. I actually just recently pulled him, and I think he's actually amazing. He's a really, really good, uh, you know, character to get you one turn uh, of basically no worries, where you just sit there, you can take all the damage because you're going to have that invincible, and that's really what he's used for, is the ultimate. Invincible for one turn is, is absolutely massive. The other stuff is cool, but really doesn't matter too much. It, it really is all about this ultimate. The passive comes in handy quite a bit because he's going to be cleansing negative effects if he's getting hit. But other than that, it's really just about the ultimate. Next up is the Titan Iceland's faction, and we have Rickard up first. And Rickard has kind of taken a hit since the first Revoid Tower rotation, but I think he's making a resurgence here with this Revoid Tower rotation. He is viable in the tank comp, and the tank comp is viable. I don't know why people are saying it's not. Either they're not running the right stats, or they're not running the right team. Because I have gone to stage 60 without any complications until we got to 60 because 60 has a double healing stage. So I had to modify my comp for that. Um, but he is a core component of the tank comp because he has this AoE true damage based on max HP. It's perfect to work with Hakran and your tank comp. He's going to be super, super tanky with the damage reduction and that and just provide so much damage. Next up is Lordrek, and unfortunately, Lordrek has not found a place anywhere for me. I've tried to get him to work so badly in Queen and in this Void Tower rotation, but he just doesn't do enough damage. If this ultimate had higher max HP scaling, unfortunately, we do not know the multipliers along with the speed multipliers, and so we do not know how much damage he sh he's actually doing, uh, but from testing, he's not doing a lot, even with stacking a lot of HP equivalent to Rickard's HP he even has a lower HP. So this is just not doing enough damage, but he would be counterattacking every time he's stunned, and that would be awesome. Unfortunately, it just doesn't do anything. So he's kind of just like uh, there to take hits. Next up is Hassel, and Hassel is the only epic healer in the game, and which is a little sad because he's not very good. On top of that, he's fire affinity, which means he's competing with Connor for that fire healer slot, and he just offers not enough healing. He has the crit resistance up uh, buff here, which is actually unique and, and very good, but he just doesn't do anything else. Like, he does a little bit of damage, uh, and he applies ignite, and all, both of those are not very, very good, and his trait only applies to himself. If this was a whole team-wide trait, this is interesting and definitely, definitely worth uh, per putting him in a couple of different areas, perhaps in arena here because it's critical strike. But unfortunately, it's just not good enough. Next up is Hakran, and Hakran is an absolute monster. This guy's gotten nerfed, and he's still top of the food chain. He is basically one of the more interesting characters because he completely disregards this whole balancing HP and defense in a lot of gacha games. Typically, you're going to want to strive for something called uh, effective HP, which is basically meaning the more HP you have, the more valuable defense gets. But with Hakran, you could, you know, share your defense. So you could stack pure defense on Hakran, pure HP on other characters. Then they have a ton of defense and a ton of HP. And then you're going to get more value out of stacking max HP from this ultimate. He's absolutely nuts and, and, and just such a crazy character. Absolutely needed a nerf. Probably needs another one, to be honest. So next up is Myla. And unfortunately, Myla isn't quite good enough. I mean, she is competing with someone like Tia for the Frozen plus hybrid damage dealer slot. And Tia has so many things better than her, especially with the most recent buffs. She's got a confirmed freeze. This freeze is a little bit of a low chance. You need to stack some negative effects first. She has a really, really low base speed, and this hurts her a ton. She's got average defensive stats and, and uh, you know, a 
above average attack, but it's not as good as Tia is. And, and Tia is a fusible character. Granted, it, it can take a while to get her, but I don't even see a place for Myla, even if you don't have Tia. So, so we're moving on to the Free Cities faction. And the first one up is Nathalia. Now, Nathalia is my pick for the best epic in the game. She is the one of the top DPS units in the game, as well as being the best AoE water damage dealer. She also unlocks Ash 12, Ash 12 being one of the most important dungeons. I think it's the most important dungeon for progression and getting some of the best sets in the game. And without her, you need one of the other legendaries. And even if you do have one of the other legendaries like Hydrissia or Ciara, you will have to gear them up much, much more significantly than Nathalia in order for you to clear out Ash 12. So that's why she is my pick for the best epic in the game. Next up is Harbeg, and Harbeg is a single target fire DPS, so he's got a lot of competition in this area, and unfortunately he just doesn't make the cut. He has a very unique kit where he's granting himself rage and then expending it to deal a bunch of damage, but that means that you have really a couple turns of burst damage, and if you want a couple turns of burst damage, let's say on the first couple turns, Melisa's absolutely going to outclass everybody, and if you want, for example, later on burst damage, Orak is another good one, Garel now is super super solid, so he just does not have a place, even if single target fire dps was super super important he still probably wouldn't have a place just because there are so many other better characters than him next up is borden and borden really has two uses in my opinion the first one is to kill off methasia's and the second one is to kill off nyx um he has ignore death immunity and invincible and guard effects which is really really useful and then he can proc a double ultimate if you get them down to 50 percent so that's another 400% damage, plus scaling with the amount of health lost, which who knows how much that is. I have no idea. <laughs> so that's the two real uses for him. So he's worth building for those if you're struggling on Void Tower or maybe in Arena. Next up is Jonathan, and I really dislike Jonathan. I do not like any character that gives themselves or another character bonus turns at the end of the round. Um, the exception would be Mary because she offers so many other things. But bonus turns at the end of the round for dungeons is really, really poor because a lot of things you need to do before the boss goes. For example, take Ash, you need to kill off the imps before they go so you don't die. Tulpa, you need to kill off the shield before the Tulpa goes or you die. So bonus turns at the end of the round really, really unfortunate. And he just doesn't do enough damage even with that bonus turn at the end of the round to make it up for it. Next up is Gajar, and we already talked about him earlier, about detonating poisons in regards to Scarlet, and that's pretty much what he's there for, so you can't use him without Gangelo. One fun thing is, if you have a couple of Poisoners and Gajar and Zitlin, you could use Zitlin with a Curse Effect and Gajar Poison Explosion, and that will apply as actual damage to Zitlin's Curse, which is really, really fun. But it's unhealable, and his trait here is super, super unreliable, so you're really, really only using him in some speed comps, and you need Gangelo for that. Next one is Lightwing Zack here, and he actually recently got a buff on his basic and his second skill here, which honestly I don't think needed really a buff. I think the real problem is that he doesn't do quite enough damage on his ultimate. I think he's solid, uh, with especially with the buffs, but he just isn't quite good enough, I think, in order for him to be a staple in Arena and Void Tower. Next up we have the Dragon Scale Marsh faction, and Asrina is the first one up. And unfortunately, I think Asrina is pretty poor. She is another, pretty much a single target fire DPS. You're not going to get ignites on a bunch of people, so this AoE is not going to do too much. So it's really all about the ultimate and that basic with the counterattack. So she's really only useful in Tulpa, and unfortunately Tulpa is, I think, less worth farming, especially due to the assassin buffs. I think Witch, Ash, and Queen are all worth farming more than Tulpa. However, the two-piece Terra and Vanguard set can be useful. But by the time you actually probably are going for that, you probably could just swap out Esrina for a ton of different fire epics that are going to be more successful than her. Next up is Zatlux, and this is the last one of the entire list. And Zatlux is an absolute monster, but I think a lot of people overestimate Zatlux. I, for example, in my recent video put him on number 6 on my epic list because he does fall off the later you get in the game in regards to, like going into Void Tower and progressing. However, he does unlock some speed comps, but I rate speed comps very, very lowly because if you are getting maximum value for your energy already, it doesn't really matter because you'll eventually run out of energy anyways, unless you're a super, super high spender, and then that's when time starts to matter quite a bit. But when you're starting to tackle Void Tower and things like that, he just doesn't do quite enough damage to really get use out of his passive which is upon the Divinity Enemy resets all the cooldowns, and when you ult someone, it's going to chain into everyone else if you kill someone. But if you don't kill someone, he's actually a terrible character, in my opinion. So make sure you're killing characters. Not terrible, but like really, really uh, average 
but so make sure you're killing someone with that ultimate otherwise it's going to be really really lackluster results so there you have it that's pretty much my overview of every epic in the game and my brief thoughts if you liked the video be sure to leave a like subscribe to the channel and let me know if you enjoy this type of content i'm thinking about doing the legendaries and perhaps the elites soon and i have a lot more to talk about in regards to some of the top epics top elites top legendaries and some things that you don't even need to six star in order for them to be viable so let me know in the comments down below if you want to see that and i will see you for the next one